So I don't have any pets, but I do have a bunch of plants, as you can see behind me. And plants are pretty cool, but you can't really create a connection between you and your plants. Well, at least I can't. And I'm going to try and fix it in this video. Okay, so this is how this is going to work. We have a plant, right? And basically when the plant has enough water, it is kind of a smiling plant. And when it doesn't, it's a sad plant. So that's pretty easy. And for this, we kind of need a plant. We need a pot. We need an Arduino processor. We need a moisture sensor. And we need an OLED screen. So we have a pot. The moisture sensor goes into the pot, connects to the Arduino, connects to the OLED screen, and connects to the plant. And that's it. Okay, let's talk hardware. So I have a moisture sensor right here. That's the guy that we're going to be using. Nothing fancy, just your regular Arduino moisture sensor uh, already wired up. Already did that part. Um, we also have uh, Arduino Nano, a small boy, because it needs to fit in the pot, right? We don't want the pot to be too big. And also, it's super cheap to get these, especially if you're buying like five of them. It's just waiting times on Amazon are quite long these days. And last but not least, oh, by the way, these two are already wired. I needed to test if it's going to work or not. Last but not least, we have the OLED screen, a pretty small one. I didn't expect it to be this small, but we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully it's going to work out pretty nicely. So it's basically these three items that we will need to make this whole thing work. Well, also, Yes, a USB cable, right, to power the whole thing. The most important item, though, is the flower pot, which we don't have, and I need to design. It's been four hours, but we do have a pot, and it's a pretty simple one, a 3D printable pot, naturally, because I will be 3D printing it. And it does have, you know, two parts, because you can't really print it as one single shape. But that's fine, we'll just glue them together. The top part is not, uh, not that interesting. The bottom part, though, is quite, quite ingenious, I might say. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. Anyway, we, we have the drainage holes for the bottom of the pot. That's, that's pretty standard. We have a slot where you can put in the moisture sensor, right? And then underneath the moisture sensor, we'll have this kind of channel where the... Um, USB cable will go, and this channel is shaped as an S, just so that we can, um, it, it's, it's basically a strain relief, right? If you yank on, the, on this end of the USB cable, it will not pop out here. That's, that's the only reason why I did it this way. Then we have our USB Nano, USB, Arduino Nano, uh, which also, all of the wires coming out from it have a channel that goes in here, twists around, and connects to our sweet, sweet OLED screen, which will display pretty pictures, hopefully. I have no idea how to do that. We'll need to learn. But that's the basic idea of it, and that's our design. So on to 3D printing, I guess. So this took 22 hours to print. Goddamn, 3D printers are still not that fast. But we do have a design on our hands and it's physical. I can touch it, which is, it always makes me giggle inside. Um, these two things do slot in and once we glue them together, they will make a nice bond, make a nice seal. There's still plenty of stuff to do. I want to cover the inside with some um, nice lac, or I don't know, some sort of a, maybe resin, some sort of material, uh, so that it doesn't leak, and also, just in case, you know, and also I made a boo-boo, actually I made two boo-boos, boo-boo number one, note to self, if you do um, USB cable hole, make it as big as the header of the USB, not as the radius of the cable itself. So I will need to use my trusted drill to kind of widen this hole a little bit. And speaking of wide holes, 
Um, this all for the, uh, the OLED screen. That is too big, right? Uh, apparently, I really suck at measuring, so I didn't measure it properly, and now we will need to use some duct tape probably to fix this problem. Other than that, I'm pretty happy. We can move on to actually thinking about how we're going to make graphics for our LCD screen. Thank God for tutorials online. So this file in Photoshop is basically 128 by 64 pixels. And that's exactly the resolution of the screen that we have, the uh, OLED screen that we have. And I've just started working with it, you know, with some pixel art, trying to draw something. I just drew an ellipse and just to see, you know, how it might work. Um, and then I drew this, which was way too creepy. I mean, no, <laughs> no, we're, we're not doing this, right? So this was a, a waste of time. And with a few refinements and so on, I figured out that we are going to go for this, which is nicer, right? So this is when the plant is happy. This is what uh, the OLED screen, the screen is going to show in the front of our pot. And I decided to maybe push it a little bit and see what would happen if we just do, you know, this kind of a nice little animation. I don't know. It seems, seems cute. Seems cute. And also I drew when the plant is sad, you know, not enough moisture, it's going to have this face here. And it's also, it also will have an animation. Oh crap. There's a, a few pixels there that are, uh, that are not perfectly black. We can only work with white or black pixels uh, because, you know, of the limitations of our screen. So I'm just kind of going through this and fixing it up. Messed it up a little bit there. But either way, that's, that is the plan, right? That is the plan. So this is taken care of, and it's actually pretty fun. Doing pixel art is fun, really. You should try it. Try it out now. Try it. Let's move on. Let's move on to actually inserting electronics or maybe writing the code. No, let's first insert the electronics, and then we will write the code. <laughs> So, the code, huh? I already can hear you skipping ahead. Don't skip ahead, I'll be fast. Uh, I will just talk about what's important and what is interesting in this code. And it's the bitmaps, right? How do you import an image into Arduino? And you do it by specifying a color for each pixel. Yeah, yeah, I know. Anyway, we have four images, right? So we have four arrays of colors. Happy one, happy two, sad one, sad two. That's a lot of text right there. Then the setup is whatever, that's not important. But the loop, that is where the magic happens, right? So repeat after me. If the value that is received from the sensor is larger than the dry limit, the plant is sad. And it should show up as sad, right? Or if the limit is not reached. So if it's not dry enough, the plant is happy and it should show it being happy. Very difficult code, very, very. 